Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to be using the Bezier tool. So we learned in the previous video about drawing with a freehand tool. We've learned about converting uh, our objects into paths. So we go object to path. And then we, knew, we know we can change these individual nodes. So if you're a little bit hazy on that or if you missed those videos, you might want to watch those first before learning about the Bezier tool. Because what the Bezier tool does is it draws based on these different nodes and these handles that, that control the arc or the curve of a line. So I'm going to zoom out here. We'll just delete these things real quick and let's get started with our Bezier tool. So the Bezier tool is here. We'll click on it. If you've never used it before, you'll be in the default mode. If you have played with it a little bit, make sure you're in the create regular Bezier path. And then we'll just click. So we can click a point here and then come over click another point and hit enter and we've created a line. We can give it a little thicker stroke by coming down here and right clicking and going to we'll give it like four so it's sort of like a fat line. And we can change the color of it by holding down the shift key and clicking on any color. So we'll make this a purple line I guess. And then if we come here click on this tool so we can edit the different nodes of this path. So what the Bezier tool has done is just drawn a path for us. From point A to point B, it's just drawing a line based on the rules that we've told it. And all we told it to do was do a straight line. But we could have it be a curved line. And a curve, there's a couple different ways. We can come to the node. If we left click and drag, it'll move the node around. But if we hold down the shift key and then drag, it'll bring out this little handle. And then this handle we can use to, if we move the angle of it, if we rotate it around, it'll kind of change the curvature of this arc coming out of this node. And if we change the distance of it, the further away it is, the stronger that arc kind of goes. So if we want it very subtle, we have it below. If we want it to be like a check sign, like a Nike sign or something, we have it come down here. And then we do the same thing with this one. We go to this node, hold down the shift key, and we can drag out this thing and we can make sort of like a wave or we want to make a, a check we make it really long here but just keep it horizontal or we can rotate it down and make like a nice curved arc shape so that's kind of how we do that also if we don't want to once these handles are out we don't have to hold the shift key anymore we can just play with the handle also we can just click on the line at any point we want click and hold and we can move the line around that way at any point. So if we click up here, it'll kind of move just this point here. If we click in the middle here, it'll move that point and it'll move both of these handles uh, accordingly. So that's kind of a good way that I like to do is just by dragging, clicking the line. But it's again, we only have two points, one point here, one point here. We can add another point by just double clicking. So if we double click right now, we've added another point and now we have a third point here and it also has um, these different handles. These ones are tied together. So we can create like a little loop here. We can have it be straight. We can create sort of like a sine wave if we want to move this like right here. We can have this one be up and then have this one be down. And then kind of make that not so extreme. So that's one thing that we can do just sort of playing around getting used to this. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. We can also go back to our Bezier tool and we can just left click and then for our second left click we can left click and hold and move our mouse and we can create an arc that way. So now we can create these arcs as we go. And I'll just press the enter key. So now we've created these arcs um, just as we were drawing without having to draw straight lines and then bend them individually. We can still go in and edit each of these. We can move the nodes around. We can play with these different handles and change the angles of these arcs. Or we can just click on any, any one line and change the arc for it. All right. Do, 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 do. Also, if we just had a straight line, let's go back to our Bezier tool again. Let's create another straight line and hit enter. We can just go to our edit, uh, this tool to edit the nodes, and we can click and just create an arc that way without having to pull out those handles every time. Uh, I'm going to delete these. So we click, delete, left click, delete. Oh, actually, we can delete, um, let me control Z. I just want to show you, you can delete individual nodes too. So while this is selected, we double click, we can get into the node edit, or we can click on it here and then uh, left click. But we can delete a node. If I want to delete this last one, I just click it, hit the delete key, and that node goes away. 
We can select multiple nodes at the same time by left clicking and do, creating a selection box. Left click and drag. Now we have these two nodes selected. We can move them together independent of the rest of the path. And we can hit the delete key and delete them uh, also. So I'm just going to select all these nodes and delete all of them. What? I guess I can't delete all of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can only delete all but one. But if we want to delete the whole thing, we can just select it as like, as, yeah, select it all together and hit the delete key and it'll delete that way. <clears throat> let's go back to our, let's go back to draw. So if we want to draw a shape, we don't have to just draw a line. We can actually draw a shape. We can complete. So we can create a little arc here, create some straight lines if we want to. And then if we go back to our starting node, it'll automatically complete uh, our shape and it'll fill it in without to press enter to close it or anything. It'll just complete automatically. And now we can take this and we can edit the nodes again, just like we did before, but we can come here, select it, and we can give it a fill color. So we can fill it with a certain color and we can change the stroke color too. So we can make, we can give it no fill color. And if we hold the shift key, we can make the stroke a different color. So that's a blue, kind of hard to see. We can make it a little thicker so we can see it. So we have a nice blue uh, outline there. And if we, one thing that you might actually accidentally do. So if we go to our uh, Bezier tool and we just click here and draw like sort of a line and hit enter and close it off. If you want to change the color of this line, <clears throat> naturally a lot of times you'll just come down here and want to select the color. So if we left click red, it's going to actually do its best to, to do what it thinks we're trying to tell it to do, which is give it a fill color of red. But we're trying to apply a fill color to a line and not a shape, not a closed shape. So it basically dr draws an imaginary line from the last point to the first point and then fills in anything it possibly can. So usually you'll, you won't want to apply a fill color to a line. You always want to change the stroke color. So these paths that we draw, by default, it's a, it is a uh, uh, stroke. So to change the color, we hold down shift and then we can make it red. <clears throat> and we'll change the, the thickness of it so we can just see it a little more dramatically. So that's how you would do that. Um, another option un under the uh, Bezier tool, if we just click and delete these, I'll go to selection, left click, delete, left click, delete. We can uh, go back to our Bezier and up under mode, if we go to this one, which is Spyro, create Spyro path, left click. Now if we just click, we don't have to click and drag, we just cl click a couple points and it automatically creates this kind of cool little, um, we don't have to do a spiral necessarily, we can come out here. So you can create some neat kind of floral designs, hit enter, and we've got this design here, um, which is pretty cool. And um, we, can get, we can go in and edit the different nodes of this. So every point where I clicked, we can edit these, and it just creates a much more fluid, um, based off of some sort of like fractal math or something, and it creates these nice spirals that we can then edit and yeah, change. So this might be nice. Um, might be You might be able to think of something that you can use this for. And it gets really nice when we start to change the shape. So we can also go another setting under the Bezier is this shape. So I'll go back to the regular mode and under shape, if we go like triangle in, for example, and if we just create a nice simple line here, we can give it some character, hit the enter key, and then you see that'll kind of create, it fades off. If we zoom in here, the last part is just sort of faded out. It gets very thin and it's kind of more thick over here. And we actually change the settings of this. This one's actually not super pretty, but if we go to path, we go to path effects, we can change this to maybe this one here. Whoa, it's a little too big. But this gives it more of like a dramatic look. We can also go back and um, doing the spiro, uh, spiro, if we check the spiro and go to uh, ellipse. This creates kind of a nice flourish. So we can just do a couple points here, hit the enter key, and then we see it starts nice and thin here. And we can edit these nodes again however we want to, but it starts nice and thin and then it goes, and we can, uh, here we can change the width of this particular one with ellipse. So we can change and make it kind of really thick. And so you can create some really nice flourishes that way. Sometimes people will download uh, like clip art and they'll want to do, you know, they'll find a specific flourish, but this way you can create your very own. Um, we can change the colors of it and, you know, make it pretty awesome. So that's a couple cool things that you can do uh, using the Bezier tool. Um, go ahead and play with it, get familiar with how it works. 
Uh, next video, maybe we'll use the Bezier tool to do some tracing, or at least in one of the future videos. So stay tuned for that. Go ahead and uh, comment below, ask questions, get involved in the discussion, and we'll see you on the next video.